Hello everybody, Princess Bear here, and we're back this time with May recap video. Actually, June. June. Hmm? June, we went to Disneyland, not May. I need a calendar. He does. We need to get one of those like Disney poster calendars that I used to buy when I actually went in office. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't need one of those. I don't need one of those. <laughs> anyway, we are back. It's going to recap. We are we got a lot to cover in this video, I think. So let's start with the drink. It was a busy month, but cheers to June. Cheers to June. Cheers to Pride. We got our um, annual pass holder glasses with Jameson and ginger ale. Remember, remember when we got nice things as pass holder gifts and not magnets twice a year? It's Jameson and ginger ale with blackberry ginger ale. Princess's new obsession, blackberry ginger ale. Mm -hmm. All the flavored it's ginger ale. Really. So let's start with entrees. Best entree of the month. I had five fives that I gave to Goofy's Kitchen when we went to Goofy's Kitchen. Okay, should I notice five. the princess loves Goofy's Kitchen. Five. And like, I didn't, yeah, I, I do love Goofy's Kitchen. I am biased. We did put a poll up on our channel, which go to our community tab and, and contribute to those polls. As of the time of this video recording, you guys said you like Chef Mickey more than Goofy's Kitchen. And, I don't understand And that, that hurts my, my little Goofy's Kitchen stand heart over here because I, I do love me some Goofy's Kitchen. But maybe it's location. No, because they're both on resort. Anyway, um, my best entree, even though I gave five of them to Goofy's Kitchen, I thought I'm going to ramble about Goofy's Kitchen quite a bit on this video. So I'm going to pick the breakfast shawarma wrap really from good. the Avengers Campus because really I can't stop thinking about that chili maple syrup. It is I'm, so good. I, I rated it a four and a half out of five claws, but just to anger people not in our community, I'm going to go ahead and say... The breakfast shawarma wrap is better than any, and I stress any, of the Ronto Roasters breakfast <gasps> wraps. I'm gonna go that far. Why did you do that? Because it's true. It's true to me, anyway. Uh, I I do like that Ronto list wrap, the the one with the the chickpeas and the spicy with the long piece of zucchini in it. But is it better than the Avengers breakfast wrap? That's the line I'm drawing in the sand. That's a hard one. Mm. Let us know in the comments what you think about Ronto Roasters versus a shawarma wrap. Yeah. Goofy's Kitchen was like a, it was like, it was a, it, it, Goofy's Kitchen proved to me the concept of character dining. Doesn't prove to me the, the concept of character dining at Walt Disney World, but it is the only character dining buffet that we have been to where Ever. I literally felt I could not eat everything. There's too much food in a good way. And, There's and too much to eat. What I love about that statement is that when we walked in, he looked at me and was like, wait, that's the whole buffet? It looks really tiny. And yes. I was like, don't worry. There's a lot of food there. Now, if you watch the video, my complaint, my one complaint is still that the area of the buffet is too small. It's too many people trying to get too many things in a small area. Which leads to like lines and issues getting to the food that you want. That was a concern. I feel like that was probably the most common complaint that you made out of everything at Disneyland because you're so used to Disney World. You're just so much space and everything being so spread out. When you go to California, it's not like that. We don't have space like that. We got to make the most of what we got, just like New York. So, like, well, then make the omelet station its own station, and so I don't have to wait how are you gonna 30 minutes for an omelet. I don't know. Figure it out. <laughs> Put it with the fruit section. There was nobody over there, basically, the whole buffet. That's true. Nobody likes to be fruity. I didn't even get fruity at Goofy's Kitchen. So, my best entree actually also comes from Goofy's Kitchen because it was a uh, um, sort of off the menu modification of an item that they have on the buffet. The chef made you scalloped potatoes, which I absolutely love. Oh, yeah. Those, those were, were amazing. I really felt that those should be, like, full-time on the buffet. But those were good. And I gave those a five out of five claws. Well, they have regular scalloped potatoes on the buffet. Not I didn't the like those as much. Ones, though. Fair. So, cheers to best entree. Cheers to best entree. Woo. I tried not to tap, and you were just like, Arr! Oh. <laughs> 
Either way, worst entree. I really wanted my worst entree to be different than yours, so I like... That is bad. I combed through all of the things that I rated poorly, and really, I didn't rate anything under a three for an entree, which I thought was interesting. I thought there was some things I rated lower, but maybe they weren't entrees. So after looking through all of the threes that I rated for the month of June, there was just one that stood out to me as the worst. And unfortunately it is the same as bears. It was the plant-based enchiladas from Sen and Hell Inn. Um, the, the other modifiable vegan option that they have available there is leaps and bounds better than this other modifiable option that they have, which was, I thought, still good, but literally just tortilla, beans, and uh, their day sauce, and that was it. It was just those, like, I could have made better enchiladas at home, but it was still really good because it was swimming in the sauce, and the sauce was good. I rated it a three. Rated it a three. But it's still my worst. Definitely my worst. I thought it was off the shelf verde sauce with a tortilla in it. It was, you couldn't taste the beans. Verde was overpowering. You gave it a third, gave it a one. I think. I wouldn't eat that. I also, because like I used some of my enchilada with the guac and the other salsa and like the chips. And I was just kind of like making it like a dip thing and not necessarily like eating it like an enchilada is supposed to be. Eaten. It was like verde soup. It was. It was a the very soup. soup, for sure. It was like sure. soup, a bowl of soup of verde with like tortillas sticking out. Apparently there were some beans in there somewhere. We still had a good time great. at San Angel. It was not great. We still had a good time. It really, it really just felt like, uh, it's like, well, we're taking your rights. We're going to take your taste buds, too. So I got a one. I would say if you're going to go there as a mm. vegan, like mm. eat something before. And go with your Omni friends still to take in the atmosphere and then like get drinks and like just do chips and guac or whatever, maybe a sorbet. I can't recommend. Can I would I? say go for the atmosphere, especially if you're going with Omnis or vegetarians, but eat before you go. Make your bill cheaper. Then why go? Grab some quick because you're going with your friends. As a vegan, you don't always get the luxury of eating with other vegans. Majority of the time, you're not eating with other vegans. You're eating with other type of people that have other dietary preferences. And you want to go out with your friends. So maybe you want to go wave at the boats and have drinks. But you might want to go grab like a burger from um, the smokehouse before you go or something. You know, I'm just saying. Cheers is the worst on trip. <laughs> We won't miss you. Make the best of the situation, at least. Maybe you go with an Omni that has their heart set on eating there, and you're just like, dang, I gotta go. Okay, well, I'm not convincing him. So, the best drink. None um, of these are surprises for this month. Best None drink for me was, we tried a lot of amazing drinks, but my favorite bay of all of hollywood studios did take the cake because anytime i can get a grown-ups lemonade at woody's lunchbox it's happening in fact when we went to disneyland and we were on batu and we were walking through that section where i'm usually on the phone getting my mobile order for the grown-up lemonade i was feeling mighty sad because i couldn't get one when we were on batu west sounds like a reason not to go to disneyland <laughs> so for my best drink a returning favorite if you've been here since the beginning and seen our original H2O Glow video, uh, the Purple Siren, which is in the hollowed halls, probably half an inch above the smoked turkey for me. I absolutely love the Purple Siren. I hate that I can only get it at Typhoon Lagoon, which may almost be worth me going back. We should get, uh, you guys are helping me with these comments to telling him that we need to get a, a pass for for the water park so just keep keep at it eventually i think we're gonna wear him down yeah she's about five percent there at this point that's progress <laughs> it is progress i'll give you that but purple siren i absolutely love that drink i wish i could get it everywhere but i like that it's a nice unique drink themed to typhoon lagoon i miss it i won't wear it now we actually. both rated those drinks a five i do think it's funny though that you are all about this drink but when we went to go order it i was like oh yeah bear don't you remember you love this drink you just like raved and raved about it and he was like no 
I don't remember everything about it. Until I drank it. And, and now here we are. He's like, it's all coming back to me. And you're like, oh, I love this drink. Oh. The second I drank it, I remembered. So, cheers to the best drink. Best drink. Like this one. This one's actually a pretty good drink. And it's three and a half out of five plus. I'd say it's a four. Worst drink of the month. We also Not hard. we agreed on this one as yeah, well. We I wanted to bad. spit out this drink, but I couldn't. It's the Isla Nubar IPA. We have a lot of Universal friends out there who, and I join with them sometimes, raving at you know Universal social media team to bring Isla Nubar to Orlando. Uh, now they cite this drink as one of the reasons why. They I, all, I can't get on board with that, fam. They also told us that it's only available at Universal Hollywood, but then, like, when we got back, we went to Islands of Adventure, and we went to their Jurassic Park bar, and they had a... Uh, it wasn't an Isla New bar, but it was another IPA, Jurassic exclusive. It was like, Jurassic IPA. It had, like, the Megalodon on it, I want to say. Either way. Uh, yes to Isla New bar. Absolutely noted this drink. You rated it. Zero. <laughs> zero. And no I, hops. I, I rated it a one. I didn't spit it out. That's the only reason I didn't get a zero. I really wanted to spit I, it out. I did, in fact, drink the entire thing. And we like got I the said, glass I home. Would, yes, and the glass is in the kitchen. So, or plastic, whatever. But, no. It, uh, I know that there were a couple of you that was like, why do you keep drinking IPAs if you hate them so much? We are bound and determined to find one of these things that we like. We're not getting anywhere though. One this day. This has been a long journey and it is, it's rough. One day we'll find it's it. It's like liquid battery acid. So, no to is a, is a new bar and cheers to the worst drink. Cheers to that horrible IPA. Best appetizer aside. Now, this the best appetizer aside was another one where I was kind of like combing through like my top a lot of good sides 15 well. yeah because they all ranged like my top 15 like sides that i had were all between like a four to five so it was like it's a funny thing is honestly we eat a lot of food but the princess loves sides love sides i used to i mean in the before times when being a vegan or vegetarian was was all you could do is go out and order sides like i'm used to that sides are my jam Princess P, the queen of sides. Whoop, whoop. That's her. Yeah. Um, so I picked the Hearts of Palm Eshebe. I think it says. It's the closest. Eshebanche. Closest that I was going to get. I am not saying that correct. I know I'm not. I'm not cultured. I should be. I'm a princess. But anyway, um, of course, I had to I had to throw my bay blue bayou up on there. I feel like I'm just like super biased on this whole <laughs> month recap because it's Disneyland. And, and every, I love Disneyland. And we still Disneyland. have a lot more Disneyland content coming. Uh, this one is already begging. She was asking to go back the day we got back. I was asking to go back as we were leaving Magic or Disneyland I mean, the last day. You were asking for another day, yeah, before we. Yeah, I wanted it. to stay, like, because we didn't fly out the next day until 10 p.m. So we totally could have done a last minute if they had park reservations open that day. But I gave that um, Hearts of Palm appetizer at Blue Bayou. It was really good. Before it's really tasty. The Pirates of the Caribbean is now open, so if you are able to get into pirates now you or to blue bayou now you would get the the construction walls are down are you down a, you have a full view of the, of you the full riding view now. Yeah. we did a we do a walk up we did a walk we did up because when we went up. they were only taking walk ups they mm. weren't taking reservations they should be taking reservations now though but yes yeah, check out that video and let us know what you guys think you go there i love that heart to palm dish it wasn't my top dish, but I was in love with that dish. That was one of the most interesting ways we've seen hearts of palm used in a while. And it just, I, I liked it because it made you think. It, it really made me want to like recreate it at home. All right, so for my best appetizers, but now I also had a best, a lot of best like side size appetizers. And this is a hard pick for me because we went to Hoopty this month. Yeah, and Hoopty had a lot of sides. And I, I risked my life to try the cornbread top mac and cheese for you guys. And I absolutely love that. That's still on my necessities list. But when I had to balance that between this other dish, ooh, it was hard because the mac and cheese was great. Mind you, I couldn't eat more than one bite. 
uh, but I would have risked it all. If we hadn't had a rest another video to film, I would have just eaten that Ooh. for that meal for the rest of the night. Oh, no. I would have just... I would not have I would have that. taken the pain. I would not have enjoyed that. I would have lived in the restroom for the rest of the night. I would not have enjoyed that. But I would have loved that. It was so good. The cornbread on top of the mac and cheese. It was super creamy. The perfect amount of like mac and cheese creamy. That is peak mac and cheese for me. Like When we make plant-based mac and cheese at home, I'm probably going to push for a cornbread top from now on. Okay. It was so good. However, this other dish... It was amazing. And it's not even a Disney dish. So we went to Gloria Stefan. Stefan Kitchen. Stefan Kitchen over near Margaritaville or in the Margaritaville yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of shopping center over there on the 192 or whatever you want to call that here in Orlando. It's, a, it's, it's just outside of, of the Disney bubble. It's like two or three miles away from it's Disney. It's like on that hotel row right next to Animal Kingdom. Yes. So it's like literally right there. Not far at all. It's an Uber ride away. Oh yeah, easy. Oh, bacon wrapped plantains. Bacon wrapped sweet plantains. So good. I was one of those dishes where I was like, eh, I don't know if I want that. And this one was like, no, you need to get that. He loves plantains. And I got that. And I love that. And uh, I still think about those plantains almost on daily. Almost as much as I think about that mac and cheese from Hoop Do You. Hoop Do You. Probably equally think about those things. Probably two things I shouldn't be eating, but. So good. Estefan Kitchen had some really good stuff. Um, even my vegan Underrated. dish was delicious. Go early. They do deals on the uh, drinks. Oh, yeah. They have like happy hour and like, stuff, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, do that. Yeah, it's it, definitely a huge improvement over Bongo's. They definitely got an A5 from me. And if you I definitely recommend if you get the chance to explore outside of Disney, that place is definitely worth your time. So cheers to the best appetizer or side. Or side. Or side. We're not doing a slash slash slash, slash this slash, month slash, like we did last month. Worst appetizer side. Our words were really easy this month. Uh, yeah, we we seem to be pretty in agreement with what was good and what was bad, or what was bad at least. Yep. Um, we called it and we posted this on our Instagram as well and a couple people were like, that's not slaw. And I was like, that's right. We called it slaw. We didn't exactly call it coleslaw yes. because there was no mayo in it. There was it. no coal. It was, was part of plant based it. shredded cabbage yes. called slaw, but it wasn't actually slaw. It was crunchy, not well seasoned. It was just, it qualifies as slaw, but it was definitely not, not coleslaw. And for the, you, you know how I feel as a bear of truth in advertising? You advertised me coleslaw, but then you gave me slaw. So you got a one. <laughs> this one gave it a three. I, I have no three. idea why she gave it a three. Well, because I gave it, a one. It, was, <laughs> it was an appetizer. It was at the beginning of the meal. It was before I had all of my little goodies. And when you throw it in with the salad, it was nice. And You basically uh, got two salads. It was, yeah. Yeah. Basically. I felt insulted. Yeah, basically. I felt insulted. I love Hoopty. I love the service. I love the actors. Our server, especially, was amazing. She was amazing. She was so super nice. Uh, but that slaw needs to go. There's no point of it even being there. You already have a salad. You don't need two salads. You know they put it on top of my barbecued jackfruit, too? Yeah, but that made sense, though. It's, it's slaw on top of jackfruit. That I can get on board with. But an extra thing of slaw... When you already have a salad, and then that same slaw on the jackfruit, why are you here? See, I would be cool with it if they left the slaw on the table, so then I could like add it to some of the other dishes that I had. But they were so fast about taking those plates at Hoopty. He didn't even get to finish some of his food because they were just... I was still sad about that. I found I ribs think, that I liked, and I couldn't eat them. I think they asked me to, if they wanted to take my salad like three times, and I kept that salad till dessert because, like, I wanted I wanted the salad. It was just, yeah, it was a rushed experience. Huh. Well, well, cheers yes. to the cheers worst to appetizer. Hoopty. We don't miss you. We don't miss the appetizer, but we miss Hoopty, right? Or we don't miss Hoopty. I miss Hoopty. I miss Hoopty. Hoopty was fun. I had to go back on time and not film so I can actually eat. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely, as a vlogger, you can't really enjoy Hoopty with the, with the way that they rush you through the meal. Um, a couple of people did comment on that video, too, and said, yeah, I wouldn't go because of all of the audience interaction and them interrupting me while I'm eating. Somebody even commented about somebody around us that was trying to do the washboard and eat the strawberry shortcake at the same time and not being able to do that. 
For those of you that want to go or eat there and don't necessarily want to get involved in the show, there is a category two and category three um, seating area that you can purchase, which is above the area. So you're and they like don't go, and they don't looking go down, they don't go upstairs. The category three is not um, accessible. So if you have a wheelchair or something, you won't be able to do category three, but you will on two. So just, you know, do category two. It's kind of like having a little box seat. You're like looking down at everybody. It's kind of nice. Honestly, I think the solution for that would be is to start the shows a half hour earlier and make them a half hour longer for food. Not the, car the actors. Give them a break. But like do 30 more, more minutes break. to allow you to like eat and actually enjoy your food. Problem solved. Start a half hour earlier. Half hour the problem morning. is like how quickly they they do three shows a night. Mm -hmm. They have four, six, and ten. Yep. That's it's a lot. It is. Or it's five. It's five, six, fifteen, and ten. I think. Yeah. So four thirty, five forty-five, and ten could probably stay. Ten could probably stay. I don't know. Either way, you guys let us know what you think in the comments. You guys saw the video. I hope you saw the video. If not, you can go back and watch the video. There's a link in that mysterious really box there. of links down below, like a... Description box. My finger's pointing. I'm like sure they'll there. be somewhere around here now, too. Yeah, up there, right here. One of these corners. <laughs> Either way, you know how YouTube works. You've been watching YouTube for this long. So, best dessert. I didn't have a lot of desserts to choose from. I need to pick up on my dessert. Game. I ate a lot of desserts this month. This one, um, I had a discussion with Bear before we put it on the dessert list because I wasn't sure if it was actually a dessert, but Bear decided, he was a tiebreaker, that it is a dessert. So my best dessert is the peanut butter and jelly pizza from Goofy's Kitchen. I gave it a five. Uh, it was amazing. And I think I made him try the piece of it with the cherry. If you're lucky, you get a slice of the cherry on it. It's just like that much better, I feel. Just like mm, level up. You guys should decide though, is does the PB&J pizza qualify as a dessert? Or is it With cherries side? on top. The cherries on top. Because you, that, that was the pizza was your favorite. Dessert of the month. Yes. But my favorite dessert also comes from Goofy's Kitchen. You can tell we actually We really Goofy's liked kitchen. Goofy's Kitchen. And that's my first time ever going to Goofy's Kitchen. I absolutely loved it. It was the hazelnut chocolate marshmallow pizza. So dessert pizzas, I'm considering them pizza because we have breakfast pizza. We have dinner and lunch pizza. Why not dessert pizza? Uh, it was, that was my favorite. I'm not a huge hazelnut person, but I could have eaten a whole pie of just that. And... We'll burn my way out of Goofy's Kitchen. Goofy's Kitchen has always had like a lot of pizzas. And like when I was in high school and stuff, pizza was my jam. So it was kind of like why I would always go. And they'd always have unique pizzas. So stuff like this, peanut butter, jelly and stuff. That's always been there. It's always Goofy. And I love that about Goofy's Kitchen. And that's why I feel like I kind of, I feel like Goofy's Kitchen is a little bit more charm than Chef Mickey's. Because, you know, everything when it comes to Mickey is very streamlined it's very organized it's very nice and neat and buttoned up and with goofy it's very it's very much more like chaotic and all over the place and i feel like i had more food in goofy's kitchen regardless i feel because goofy's more exploratory and stuff he's more out there with some of his personalities and things they can be a little bit they can match that in the food i would say that the food items in goofy's kitchens felt a lot more unique whereas like the main foods at chef mickey is it basically the same as most, as of, most of Disney World buffets? Yeah. Slight differences. So I, I definitely sold on going back to Google's Kitchen, especially for the price. Like it's more than worth it. Especially if you have a lot of people in your party who have no idea what they want to eat. And you More want to see characters? Sold. Uh, as for Chef Mickey, we will eventually return. But they're going to be judged by a very, very high bar next time. So... Yeah, they got a lot to live up to. Maybe Mickey better get his game up. Comment and let us know if you want us to go back to Chef Mickey's for breakfast. I've been trying to convince this one ever since we left Goofy's Kitchen if we could go to Chef Mickey's because I miss Goofy's Kitchen. And he keeps saying no, so please comment and help me convince him. Basically, what you're saying is that's saying to everything. Yeah, he does. He, his automatic answer to anything. I suggest is no right away. Cheers to the best dessert. Worst dessert. 
Coincidentally, from the same restaurant. Also Goofy's Kitchen. Yes. Our chef, or the allergy chef, like, hooked it up so hard for me. And then she decided, she was like, I got two vegan desserts for you. Here you go. You get a brownie and you get this chocolate cake. And I didn't think anything of it until I ate it. And then I definitely spit it out. Yep. And my napkin looked like... It was not great. Yeah. I gave it a zero. Mm. The vegan chocolate coconut cake. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 claws. Uh, it was average. It, it tastes like German chocolate cake. Yeah, it's coconut and, centric. And personally, I do not like German chocolate cake. Neither so do I. It, 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 was, it was a no for me, fam. Is, is, it, is it cake? Yes. Is it German chocolate-ish cake? Yes. It was there, was thick. Some, there are some people out there who would love that. I did not love it, but it didn't taste bad. I just didn't like it. I agree. We do have the Flower and Garden Festival that's going to be ending this month. Yep, but we so, did not go in June. So no, we did we not. We don't have anything for you for festival stuff. But next month for a recap video or for your viewing pleasure period, we have the beginning of the world's <laughs> longest food festival. It's probably not even true. Uh, food and wine. Food and Wine will be beginning July 14th. We will be there July 14th, July 15th, and maybe July 16th. And we will be making multiple trips to Food and Wine, not in July, but the festival is going through November? Yes. And a lot of the stands won't open until August So we'll be well. going back. So there, you will at least be getting two trips out of us. Maybe more as we do spend a lot of time in Epcot as things pop up or you guys make your recommendations. Because obviously we can't eat every single thing, even though there were some of you out there on Twitter that did challenge me to everything. Uh, we will be making multiple trips. Very, very much. As for our princessities and bear necessity, or bear necessity items for the month. Got me saying necessities now. Necessities. Ugh, what have you done to me? <laughs> so, my bear necessities items for the month, I had four. Uh, Two of which you've heard me rant and rave about as we've been doing this video, as if there was any surprise. But the Purple Siren, because I miss that drink dearly, it completes my soul, much like a smoked turkey. Uh, if we go back to Typhoon Lagoon, and we probably will, because I'll just cave to Princess's whims. Uh, I'm, One I'm, whim cave! I'm getting at least two Purple Sirens next time. I'm, I'm wilding out, I'm getting two Purple Sirens. Whoop, whoop. Uh, the, ba the bacon wrapped sweet plantains have guaranteed that I will return to Gloria Stefan's kitchen. At some point. Absolutely. Guaranteed. Maybe we should do more Margaritaville content. Let us know if you want us to go to Margaritaville. Oh, definitely. Or anything else in the local Rondo area. We will go anywhere. It doesn't have to be Disney or Universal. We like local food, too. There's a lot of good do. local food out there. Uh, the Painkiller from Is The New Bar and Universal Studios Hollywood is absolutely delicious. Delicious. And uh, it will definitely, uh, I, it definitely qualifies as what I consider to be a pain killer. Truth in advertising. Awesome. And last up, the cornbread mac and cheese, because oh I gosh. daydream about this mac and cheese all the time. I had one bite and made it a bare necessity, so that tells you how good that mac and cheese cornbread is. I wish, wish I could have eaten the entire thing. I had five items for the princessities list. The first one is the San and Hell Margarita from San and Hell Inn. It was very enjoyable with the little uh, shaker. Is that the one that had his own rave party with the glow cube? No, that was the alabrije. Uh, okay. I gave the um, San and Hell Margarita a five. It was a mini shaker, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one got a five. The Grown Up Lemonade, of course, we talked about that one earlier. That's my jam. It's my bae. Gotta get, like, I know Oga's is at Hollywood Studios, but I'm saying, Grown Up Lemonade is the best drink at Hollywood Studios. I I, said, I, I'm gonna die on that hill. I've, I've ranted several times that the inavailability inaccessibility of getting into Oga's decreases all the ratings and all the drinks because they're just sometimes just too hard to get into. Plus they're really expensive. Yes. Um, then the plant-based toasted cheddar sandwich also from Woody's Lunchbox. I gave it a four and a half but it is a princessity's item. I will ask Bear to go to Hollywood Studios just for that sandwich it's if I'm craving it. It's definitely uh, the grilled plant -based cheese grilled of cheese. my dreams. Oh. If you know of a plant-based grilled cheese, let us know. She will, she will, she won't run there, but she'll make me drive faster. Outside there. of the happy grilled cheese, which we did go to that one in St. Augustine, and that was amazing. Their vegan grilled cheese was amazing. Um, then the Impossible Breakfast Shwarm Up from Avengers Campus. So good. That one I gave a five. 
the vegan strawberry shortcake at Hoopty because everybody has to have that strawberry shortcake. If you want the, the Trails End food options, they have the Hoopty dish for vegans, but the dessert is not the same. It's a lemon tart at Trails End. You can only get the strawberry shortcake at Hoopty. If you could have taken anything home, you would have. I would have definitely done that. Yeah. And then, of course, the surprising, most beautiful, amazing dessert of them all, the peanut butter and jelly pizza that we just discussed from Goofy's Kitchen. I gave that one a five as well. A lot of good food to be had throughout this month. Lots of great things to come in July. I can't wait for food and wine. There is a lot of new things. We'll be going through that. We'll yes. be looking for their modified items. Lots of good drinks to have. We have more California content coming to you in July. So look, look forward for that. We are not done with the state of California yet. We so never will be. Still more to do. If there's anything, of course, as always, if you guys like to see us do, comments in a place to let us know. And that's comments on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook. Community tabs. Facebook. You know where to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And like this video. Or, or comment. You, or you get webbed up by the princess. I'm going to web him. <laughs> All right, Parker.